Hey, do you remember that time Shia LaBeouf wore a paper bag on his head and said Strange Mysteries was his favorite YouTube channel? I sure do. What about that time you studied for a test you'd already taken? Or when your brain thought it hated a thing and it realized that contradicted another thing and now you love it? Does that make sense? Are you following me so far? Probably not, but don't worry, because soon all will be clear as we explore this list of five mind-bending psychological theories. In at number five, false memories. Are your memories your own? Or has someone planted them in your mind artificially? Is this even possible? Apparently so. In the mid-1990s, an experiment called the Lost in the Mall study attempted to convince a group of people to believe something that had never happened. And it worked. Ha <laughs> ha! Good luck trying to convince me that Shia LaBeouf doesn't love strange mysteries. Anyway, in this experiment, all the psychologists had to do was describe a false childhood event, i.e. getting lost in a mall alongside real events that actually happened, and repeat the claim over several interactions. So, if you owe your friend 50 bucks and you don't want to pay it back, tell them you paid it when you went to that baseball game, or vegan craft festival, or whatever the heck you kids do these days. As long as the second event really happened and you repeat your lie enough times, you should be able to convince them to let you off the hook. This study obviously proved controversial as it calls into question literally every court testimony ever. But how scary is it that the memories we're holding in our minds right now could be distorted or entirely fictitious? Unlike that time a bag-wearing Shia LaBeouf said he loved strange mysteries. Remember that? You do now! At number 4. Future Phenomena there are plenty of psychological theories which attempt to draw lines between your past experiences and current mental state. But what if this concept worked backwards? What if your current psychological state was being influenced by events that are yet to pass? Social psychologist Daryl Bem believes that human beings are affected by their future just as much as they are by their past. And he thinks he's proven it. In 2010, BEM's experiments involved testing human responses to certain situations before subjecting them to psychological influence, such as subliminal messaging, visual images, and good old-fashioned book learning. And his results were astonishing. He found that those who were asked to guess which set of curtains concealed an erotic image were more accurate if they were shown the truth afterwards. People who were asked to choose one of two identical images favored one particular picture, one which did not have a disturbing image flashed over it after they made their choice. And even crazier was the experiment which showed that people scored higher on a simple memory test if they revised afterwards, not before. So does this show that humans have precognitive abilities? Can we see into the future? I'm not sure. But Daryl Bam is certainly no quack. He is a professor emeritus at Cornell University. And if you fail one of his midterms, then I guess you better pull an Adderall all-nighter next Tuesday. At 3. Never trust a nice guy. Let's drop down from university to high school. And imagine you're sat between two guys, Pete and Dave. Pete is a real nice guy. He smiles a lot, treats the teachers with respect, and never has a bad word to say about anyone. Dave, on the other hand, is a complete asshole. He's cold, ignores you when you say hi, and he's always answering back in class. Then, bang! Scene change. The psycho from Saw bursts into class and hooks you up to an electric shock machine. He takes the switch and says you must hand it over to either Pete or Dave. Who are you gonna go for? Well, it ain't Pete, that's for sure. 
A study from the journal Psychology showed that because nice people are so agreeable and unquestioning, they are therefore more likely to commit atrocities when asked. Conversely, cold ass mothers like Dave refuse to take part due to their hardline contrarian nature. And prepare to be triggered, folks, because next up, the obligatory Third Reich and Trump references are coming your way. On the whole, those on the hard left are supposedly less likely to go along with morally questionable acts than those on the hard right. So, I guess that explains why some of my overly liberal friends are such douchebags, and it also shows why so many Germans were A-OK -okay with what went down between 1939 and 1945. But what it doesn't explain is why that liberal guy punched that alt-right jerk-off at Trump's inauguration. I mean, don't get me wrong, he deserved it for sure. If only for besmirching the good memory of Pepe. Man, I used to love that frog. 2. Opposites Distract How often do you check your phone or watch a dumb video when you're in the middle of doing something important? Not enough, apparently. At least that's what a study from the University of Copenhagen found out. Their research indicates that the occasional distraction helps you become less distracted overall. Mashed potatoes mash easier with milk added as well as butter and cheese. Wait, what? Oh, that was just a brief distraction to keep you focused. Back with us? Good! In this test, two groups of people were asked to complete a task. One group was shown a funny video, which they were told they must watch to completion. The others were shown a button they could click to watch the video, but they were told not to do so. And contrary to what you might expect, those who watched the video performed better at the task than those who weren't able to give in to the distraction. It is thought that this occurred because human willpower is finite, and that eventually you must succumb to temptation. Otherwise, it proves more distracting than the original disturbance. So when mom complains that you're spending all night liking Hulk Hogan nip slip pictures on Instagram instead of doing your homework, just hand her a copy of this study and tell her to stop distracting you from being distracted. And at number one, cognitive dissonance. Leon Festinger was an American social psychologist who made his name with the theory of cognitive dissonance, which states that humans adjust our beliefs subconsciously in order to fit certain rational conclusions. Humans find it hard to hold two contradictory beliefs at once. So, our brains choose one without us ever knowing. And gradually, this option takes over and becomes the dominant opinion. The theory was based on findings from reports on an Indian earthquake which took place in 1934. Shortly after the quake, rumors began to circulate that an even worse disaster was on its way. But many of the people who believed this had escaped the first quake entirely unharmed. They felt the shock, and their houses weren't damaged. But the idea of what they thought an earthquake should be like didn't fit with their experience of what it was like. So their brains stepped in and made stuff up, in an attempt to justify the initial fears they felt. Festinger stated that the idea of holding two contrary ideas on one's mind is psychologically uncomfortable and that when we feel such an imbalance, we become motivated to reduce it. This means our ideas and desires may not be our own at all. And what's worse is that cognitive dissonance often makes us choose an option that may not be the best for us. Let's say you're offered a dollar a day to watch Housewives of Orange County. That show is so darn tedious that surely no one could ever enjoy it. But oh, you will. Your brain wouldn't be able to handle the idea that you're doing something so vapid for such a small reward. And since it can't artificially inflate the value of that dollar, cognitive dissonance would make your mind compensate by raising the value of the experience instead. After a while, you'll be a fully-fledged Housewives fan, enjoying something you do not really enjoy and all because your brain can't hold two conflicting thoughts at once. So hurry up and choose. Did Shia LaBeouf really say he liked strange mysteries while wearing a brown paper bag on his head on Monday, October 10th, 2014? Or did we just make that up? You can't think both. Eh, we'll let your brains figure it out on their own. 
And that's our list. But don't go anywhere just yet. Because you agreed last Thursday after breakfast that you'd watch our latest video on the three reasons why we are living in a simulation. So go on. This lovely distraction is waiting right for you.